Hi there YouTube, it's me Gemma at Story and the Song and I wanted to come to you today with a spoilery review for God's Grave by J. Kristoff. I read God's Grave within the space of a day because it was so good. It was so well written, it really carried me along. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about. The first one being the characters, the character development of the main character Mia Corvair. Now in the first book it was very much focused on Mia's revenge and it remains so in this book. However, in God's Grave Mia really starts to connect with other people outside of her limited sphere of knowledge. She grew up pretty sheltered in the Marrowbone section of God's Grave. She spent time in the sort of criminal element but was sort of sheltered by Mercutio and then she went to the Red Church. So she doesn't have a lot of experience of the outside world. She's never really spent time with a different variety of people who weren't all sort of having their own agenda in terms of revenge or killing or assassins. She gets to meet some, you know, for a better word, lack of a better word, normal people out in the world, which really does affect her character. She decides to get herself sold into slavery to a certain so she decides to get herself sold to a, the owner of a certain gladiator school called the Sanguinari but in actual fact ends up being sold to his daughter instead where she meets a few different characters that she forms a variety of different bonds with including a soldier who used to work with her father and a fellow Darkin that she wants to try and get through to. Now Mia is using being sold into slavery in the gladiator school to try and assassinate the two people who are left after the end of the previous book, the consul and the bishop. Now she thinks that if she wins the end of this massive competition then she will have a chance to kill them without all their guards and everything being about. So that is why she ends up being sold into slavery. Throughout this she also discovers that the Red Church have not been completely honest with her and that there are things going on in the undercurrent that she just isn't hasn't been aware of. She runs into some old friends including Ashlyn who she starts to work with because of a map that Ashlyn has and turns out that Ashlyn has always been in possession of it and it's something that the other side want quite badly. So she ends up working with Ashlyn and Mercutio to try and win this competition and you know the two people she wants to. However things of course don't go as planned as always. She becomes attached to people in the gladiator school and starts to see how unfair life is in general in the Republic. She starts to really think about things outside of her own revenge. She starts to see that there is a lot of unfairness in the world that she hadn't even known about given the fact of her upbringing and then going to the church. She starts to see that there are good people out there who deserve a better lot in their life and that things like slavery and indentured servitude and things like that are, are an evil that need to be sort of eradicated from the world. She starts to see slavery as something that is bad and she starts to see the rot sort of at the heart of the empire itself rather than just the symptom of the people that she wants to get rid of. And she, I don't want to put too many spoilers, but at the end she does something that you think, oh, she's totally just chucked all that out the window, she's just going to go for a revenge but it turns out that she actually hasn't. She's actually compromised things, she's compromising her ideas of revenge, what revenge looks like in order to help people outside of herself which is to me just the most amazing character development and it happens really subtly throughout the book. There's never one moment where she sits down and goes <sighs> well god damn I don't know if this is worth it. It's all through the book. She still wants that revenge but she starts to see that there are consequences for people other than herself and that she really doesn't want to to have other people come to harm. She starts to really actually care about people which is amazing and one of the reasons why I love Mia Corvair. She's still so smart, she's still so sensible 
but she gained so much more sort of soul and, and personality in God's Grave, I think, which is excellent. The other characters, specifically Ashlyn, I was prepared to hate Ashlyn, but you do discover that she has had her reasons for what happened in the Red Church. She comes into contact with someone she thought was dead, but it turns out not to be so dead, or is he? We don't quite know yet. Um, and she really does show her loyalty to Mia and that she actually does have real feelings for her, which is a surprise, not something I thought would happen, but um, certainly I'm not complaining about it. It's, um, it's a really good relationship and really well structured. And also the Shahids in the Temple of the Red, the Red Church, you sort of start to suspect different things are going on with them. They know more than they have been letting on and all that comes to a sort of head at the end where there's a big revelation about who was actually paying Mia to complete the jobs she was doing at the beginning of the book. Now, I think the plot in this moves relatively quickly. It does have flashbacks to show us how Mia got into this situation at the first place. And everything is actually really well foreshadowed, except for the twist at the end that I won't spoil. Everything's pretty well foreshadowed throughout the story. And like I said with Mia's characterisation, it's done in such a way that it builds up throughout the story without it just being sort of, here's some information. Um, you sort of are reading through it and you're going, oh, right, okay, yeah, mm, that sounds, mm, yeah. And then by the time you get to the end, it all sort of makes sense, which I think is a sign of really, really great writing. And also I was pleased to see some, I think, bio rep in here, um, given Mia's previous relationship with Trick in the first book and her now relationship with Ashlyn. Unless they come out and say that she's specifically a lesbian, I think we can go ahead and say that Mia is bi and it's always good to have an awesome bi character um, in a book. It's always great to see, which I love. I love. Um, so all in all, I gave God's Grave five stars. I don't really give out five stars that often. I usually, even if I really like a book, will give four. But this had everything, it had character, it had plot, it had the suspense, you were genuinely worried for Mia, you were led down a couple of different red herring paths, and then at the end everything was wrapped up and they dropped some bombshells for the next book which comes out in September. So I will be avoiding all spoilers if people are getting arcs of this book for you know early review, I will be avoiding all spoilers because I will be pre-ordering the next one and I will be devouring it on the day that it arrives. That is how much I loved this book. So um, that ends this little mini review of God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. As I say, I gave it five stars. I'd love to know what you guys think, if you loved it, if you hated it, if you thought it was kind of okay. Um, I'd love to hear all that down in the comments. Take care. Bye-bye.